right. Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Hey, everyone, it's Jonathan's birthday. <laughs> you remembered, you remembered everyone. Thank you. <laughs> that we are going to be discussing everything going on in the figure skating world. We're a couple days late this week, but there has been so much going on, so much happening. We it was like make... the biggest weekend of skating ever. There were like 85 events. Ever. And in the middle of it, we have the war going on in Israel. My phone has been blowing up by a certain Olympic champion, if you can imagine. Like as Paul Wiley is holding my phone to record, there are text messages flashing. Okay, so you just need to like put that in. Just to remind him who he's dealing with. Those are the kinds of texts you get. <laughs> yeah. Listen, not even probably the most curious person in my phone. Okay, not even, that's like a two on what's been happening this week. Okay. Yeah. We okay. I am up in Lake Placid. I've been here for more than a week right now. Jonathan, the seasons have changed. By the way, if you're new here, please subscribe below. We're gonna tell you everything you need to know about skating. We may not tell every single little performer in the Junior Grand Prix, because there's been so much going on, okay? Yeah, so much. Uh, and if you want me to just like let it in, you know, people forgot that I also cover gymnastics. And some people, what's weird is that when you get to a certain threshold on Facebook, <laughs> Like people comment that don't realize that you know stuff. So obviously I know who Mary Lou Retton is. Obviously I know who her daughters are. And they put up a spot fund link because Mary Lou has been in the hospital. Now, privately, I have heard that Mary Lou has had some health struggles prior to this. She's had 28 surgeries on different parts of her body. You know, gymnastics is the healthiest sport in the world. Yeah, clearly. Um, okay. <laughs> They say she was born with hip dysplasia on top of being a gymnast and everything. So she's been a lot of injuries and chronic pain. So Mary Lou's been in the hospital for, uh, you know, she's been in the hospital for pneumonia. But if you've seen photos of her over the last year, she's not been doing great, you know, and, and her one daughter competed for Arkansas. But, you know, the public doesn't know this. They And, and I've had to realize, like, the public doesn't follow what's right. happening, right? They think of Mary Lou Retton as America's sweetheart, like everything going on and not realizing that like her life has had struggles, just like Debbie Thomas had struggles, just like this person does, right? So yesterday, yeah, I I gotten wind a couple of days ago that she was in the hospital. I saw her daughters were like vague, tweeting like pray for mom, right? And then you see like the link comes out. No. She doesn't have health insurance. I don't know how she doesn't have health insurance. I don't know why, right? But then I'm wondering, like, who's paying for her surgery? I like that she had to get it. Like, I don't know. I know that she got divorced in 2018 because her daughters used to have vlogs that I used to watch. I think I used to talk about them on here. Right. But one, and you'd like see Mary Lou in the background, and it was almost like this meta reality show going on. So I feel very close to Mary Lou. Even yeah, I remember when they doing things in the car often. Yeah politically like about nothing with Mary Lou but I was following this and I have empathy as a human being you know but I think people are she made a lot of mistakes during the Larry Nassar situation that still doesn't mean that she's not a human and that she you know and I think that so many of these athletes don't have the same education that you or I do let's just let's just be honest okay there are those who are like Paul who are so type A that they are going to go to Harvard and skate and do this. And then there are those who are in the more normal level where, you know, you skating has to take. They're, they're sort of bubbled off almost. It's this. It's like two extremes, right? Yeah. As I have often found with athletes and that's not being rude. That's just right. And, and because Mary Lou is so well-spoken and charismatic, I think sometimes you think that they're going to be the same. And listen, we all make choices and things. Um, but I believe that, you know, she's had a lot of struggles. And I think that she's had a rough go of it the last couple of years is my understanding, uh, not knowing like a lot of personal, personal details. But yesterday when I posted it, people were like, no, this is a scam. And I'm like, no, this is not a scam. And the thing is like, the media I had- thought Mary Lou was trying to lie and scam people. Um, or that Daughters were trying to scam for money because people just think Mary Lou's worth $8 million because if you Google someone's net worth, those net worth things are like 
internet estimates that are hogwash, but you it's don't- as, it's, as, it's as wrong as a Zillow's estimate. <laughs> right? Where they say this person's worth this much and they don't even make any sense with like, right. if you Google like the net worth of each gymnast, like that doesn't make sense. Plus you don't know what someone's investing in. You don't know what they're doing with their, right? You're like yeah. um, someone could invest in something and make tons or lose everything or, right? So, and people, yeah, they've really had a lot of feelings about this, especially because it gets, then it gets into politics and it gets into stuff. Mm -hmm. The ironic thing is that Mary Lou is in a life insurance commercial right now, but obviously that's not health insurance, right? So right. let's review this for everyone. Life insurance is if you drop dead, okay? Health insurance is what you need so that you don't. Um, right. So I think, but who knows if that's the only work she's done this year? I mean, I don't know. Do people still, post COVID, like do companies still hire people to come in and like motivate them? Like, at what point do you stop being the person giving the motivational speech? And I always think after every Olympics, there are so many more stars to come in that you could probably get cheaper to come for your corporate company. I don't know that world and how it works, but we see Scott Hamilton selling his house. You know, he sold all of his belongings a couple months ago. So who knows what happened? You know, the world is changing and people have struggles and skating is and not working. No one knows what's happening behind the scenes. I mean, it's interesting that this happened then with, I didn't realize that was sort of some of the public response to when you shared that Mary Lou information. But even when Todd Sand was in the hospital and you were sharing about this, everyone felt the need to scrutinize whether it was deserved or what the problem was. And I was like, yikes, maybe just don't give money then hard. What's so hard is that you're dealing with people are in heightened states of emotion, right? Then you deal with like, I believe Jenny was like very private. And like, she also was very, uh, Jenny wasn't the one leading the fundraising efforts, right? Like other people wanted to raise money for them. And I think, you know, people feel embarrassed, or they don't feel yes. or they're so humble, but like, right. And I think in this case, like the daughters want to be somewhat private about whatever's going on with Mary Lou, but what they don't realize is that people don't understand how, why America's sweetheart would need money, right? And because not everybody has that worldview when this goes public, you know, this is, and I don't think people realize like the connections, but if you go on Michelle Kwan's Instagram where the one where she was in the helicopter, um, by the ruins where some people were criticizing her for that and people write nasty comments there. Mary Lou's like, you're awesome, writing there. Mary Lou and Michelle Kwan each shared an agent. He had like basically focused on one client at a time. Chef Goldberg made Mary Lou the biggest star after the 84 Olympics. And then he replaced her with Michelle Kwan. Yeah. So he wasn't like with both of them at the same time is my understanding um, from when I was talking to a reporter. Well, yesterday. and technically you're talking about a decade later that he yes, would have, like, you know, I mean, so also as an agent, if you're thinking about striking while it's hot, Mary I, 20 years past that Olympic victory is different. They're 93, 94, at which point Michelle was like the hot commodity. And yeah. I don't know all the details there, but I believe that's roughly when this happened. So, you know, it's, it's just like interesting things in someone's life. And I think also, I mean, how many times do we see it with performers where like you get, you think the money's going to come in forever and then it doesn't. Well, and, and, then, and a lot of those cases, like I've even noticed this with some friends that have like broken up with a spouse or something like that. And if you are never used to making your own decisions, if you are never used to thinking about your money critically and other people handle it, suddenly when that's gone, where is that training? Where is that education and how to sort of move forward on your own? Yeah, the other thing is like, I think so many athletes at the highest, highest level take advantage of media opportunities after. And coaching sort of feels like, what you do if you didn't make it, right? And then many of them have to pivot or many of them don't know the place for them in the organization and the organization doesn't engage them. I think we see this all the time in skating, people talk about it. In gymnastics, they talk about, you know, that they feel left high and dry um, by yeah. everyone. I mean, you know, in Russia, <laughs> this is, maybe the Federation would take care of some medical expenses. You know, who knows? It's a different culture, different society. But in America, you're not like on the Olympic payroll for like, right. you know, has a surgery she's not like the u.s olympic committee isn't like yes you gave 
fight for America and we're going to take care of you for life. That's not how this rolls. So yeah. um, anyway, it's it's kind of weird. And being in Lake Placid and like the Olympic hub, I went on the bobsled experience the other day. Oh, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's the, I went on the coaster that mimics the, the bobsled path. It's like 25 miles an hour. They only have it open for a couple weeks a year, but I want to come back here to work with Paul again. And like, I want to do the real bobsled experience. Sandra told me. The one that this is scare me is like skeleton or like. But it, so I, I was excited. I was already bummed that you couldn't do the real one. Right. And then I like messaged Sandra and said, oh, I went on the bobsled thing. I went on the real one. All right, Sandra, we get it. We get it, okay? <laughs> You're Sandra and we're not, okay? Even in bobsled, she knows how to just take the cake, yeah. <laughs> kind of like a little surreal-ish being here when like you're walking around backstage of, to like get to the USA rink, which is the rink where Sergey uh, collapsed, right? We, that's where I have my lessons. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, and like being on the Sonia Henney rink in 1932. But when you walk around backstage, it looks so familiar. And I realized not only did we obviously see competitions here, but all those stars on ice fluff pieces over the years on a &E when they would like show them backstage, that's always in like Placid, whatever. Ah, okay. <laughs> it looks like oddly familiar, even though it's like- like, doing like a TV set or something, yeah. Like it's, it's like weird, right? But I've decided that Jonathan, we are reclaiming Lake Placid for Linda. That is our mission. Okay. You know, that one lane road, she probably had to lead, you know, as she was crying, you know, when she was yeah. raw. Yeah. 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 We're reclaiming it for Linda. It's a fabulous village and Linda deserves it. Okay. Yes, she does. And I'm here for the, I was here originally for the world figure in fancy skating competition. And then I knew that Paul was up here and I just worked with him in a session. So I thought, let's. Why don't we work together while I'm up here and um, was able to extend it. And- Because is he based there or he just teaches? Yeah, he's based here. He was working, he had a job where he was in charge of all of the venues. And then there's some political, this is a political position, but he also, um, you know, coaches and has been doing seminars and things. So go Wiley at me.com if you want Paul for your seminar to talk to you about when he did the John Curry exercises. Um, but yes, there's so much, listen, Paul is, it's a trip. Let me and tell you. Brilliant. Like again, that interview you did with him was one of my favorites. He's that intense when he teaches. Okay. You're, you're <laughs> at level. You know? But there's something warm about, there's something that is based in a passion for the sport that is so beautiful to see. And then I was so distracted by it because, you know, Paul has a playlist on the ice that could go anywhere. And I don't know when he's playing the music and when this other coach is. And sometimes Sarah Bareilles is playing. Sometimes it's Nirvana. Sometimes it's R.E.M. I saw Paul Wiley playing the air guitar when we were skating. I, like, <laughs> you know, and I did one of those, you you. you you know, it happens when you, um, to me, having ADHD, it happens to me probably once every couple of years. It had to happen here. Sometimes you get on the ice with your guard still on and you know you splat like the beginning of Bambi and go flying and it hurts, okay? But the thing is, is that I'm walking into the rink and I'm like, there, there's a whole thing with buying sessions here that's like really confusing. And there's like a guy that like chases you mid-session to like, scan your ticket but maybe the box office wasn't open because it's like placid and things aren't really on time here okay. um <laughs> i am hearing the song from the waitress that gracie skated to which She's like mine yeah which anytime i have heard that song outside of skating or outside of that venue you're like wait a second that was that song that like gracie was skating to when we were all wondering if like it was appropriate or not right. which like some people loved it. And the people who loved it are the same person that anytime they see Katya, they have to mention dead Sergey. I yeah, interviewed I understood. <laughs> people like, oh, does he still wear his wing, his ring? She's two husbands from there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Stop the Jackie O act for now. Like, can right. she just her life? Like, I think people still want Katya to be wearing black and mourning, but that is how they made her famous. Okay. Go to any Katya video, look up how many comments about dead Sergey. Okay. 
But just, again, if that's when like some people that aren't consistently following left her, she's still in that place. Just like you were talking about Mary Lou. Yeah. People want to, no wonder she's so private, right? Like, I think they want to talk to her about it all the time. Yeah. Keep her grieving. Like, how's your ankle? I think the ankle's fine. She's run marathons on it since, so, right? But um, <laughs> but the Katya, the dead Sergey, because having like I see it, right? Mm. It's so well, weird. Yeah, it becomes like trip. People get in their emotions about that. Oh yeah. Mm. Well, I'm also curious. Like, was that happening with the Debbie videos? A bit. Yes. Everyone's still talking about Carmen, or is everyone still talking about that reality show she was on? Struggles, right? Yeah. And I've spent a lot of time with her. And I I was interviewed about covering Debbie while I was sitting next to Debbie. And Ooh. I don't sense that she really wants to talk about like the bad stuff or like the like she wants to talk about what she's doing now. Yeah, right? fair enough. Yeah. Um so yeah so i was here for the figures championship okay obviously i interviewed debbie and shepherd um and knew that debbie was one of our first guests and remember that was one of those things where remember debbie thomas was a surgeon and whatnot and one of those when we interviewed her that was the first inkling that we had that anyone had that like she was struggling and that like people would ask me about that interview forever Okay, and and, that, and the interview, which was like right when I was discovering the skating lesson, and I remember watching it because I love Debbie. And you're like, "Huh, the something is very off about the energy here." You wondered if she was struggling, or maybe it was just an off day or something. And then, isn't that like sort of the the edited version? What yeah, yeah. put it trying to put her forward it's in the best light. There were it went on for over three hours at night on a Friday. And it was really extensive um, because the guy that she was with at the time came in and came on camera and the whole deal. So yeah, so that was like our fourth interview. And I remember when she was on a Yanla, Fix My Life, I had always had this sinking feeling in my stomach that like, did they get wind of that from our interview? Like when everything started to happen, I was like, Oh no. Right. Like I did it, you know. Because anyway, it seemed clear maybe in that interview that that was the situation. Yeah. I have spent a lot of time with her. She's also absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Like, like so much smarter than the rest of us. So <laughs> and, that's a burden. That's a well, burden. I don't envy that kind of intellect. I, th I think it weighs heavily on those that are, are that smart. Super authentic and super smart. And we'll just start like telling you about like how she did the figures. Like when you ask Debbie how she did the figure, she will tell you, well, I just started to feel better about this when I was getting here and what, and like the detailed information is fantastic, right? She is amazing to watch practice and do it, but she was not guaranteed to win here. Mm. And she trained like two or three hours a day. So the people that are here for the figures championship, especially it, the women's event is so competitive. Mm. Like my friend Kate did it. And I was like, Kate, like you have a daughter who has special needs. You are practicing, you're coaching, you're doing this. Like Debbie is practicing like two or three hours a day. She and Shepard traveled with a nutritionist up here. Mm. Trying to live your life and yeah. practice a few times. You know, like you have to put this into perspective, right? Yeah. The woman, Marianne Dish, who won this event had the most precise turns. And in practice, she did this figure that has a backspin in it. Yes, I was seeing that, yeah. And watching her perform it, it was the most beautiful, upright thing I have ever seen in my life. And you know, she didn't even win that figure on the day. I think she was like fourth or fifth in that figure because they judge it blind. Oh. Because we have to enter Karen Cortland. Right. Karen Kelly 
reminds me of real life Miss Frizzle, but the skating version. <laughs> Jonathan, is that wonderful? She is that pure? Okay. She's inside Why? your nervous system in a bus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. She's been polite. For 30 years, I took Karen's class about the figures last night, which everyone should do, where you do the figures on the floor from your house in socks with hula hoops and you go around and she's going to teach you alignment, that ankle strength and that deep core work. Oh, wow. Okay. And like, she's for real. And I said, Paul, I feel like I, I just was like in the Harvard or skating. He's like, or the Hogwarts, who knows, right? <laughs> like <laughs> Um, she's so brilliant at Pilates and gyro and like connecting it. Everybody here spends a lot of information. They speak very quickly. And I want to say like, people get that when I talk, there are scales of this. Okay. okay. Like, no. All right. So, you know, she was the one where I posted the video where she was like, yes, well, you know, back loops are the same thing as doing this and the Pilates performer. And I was like, whoa. Okay. Yeah. Like, that's a level of like connection that is you know, you can't have that conversation with everyone. Right. And so, you know, the DNA in our bodies is, that's also in figure eights. So this right. is how you found this all. And you're like, whoa, like this level. is- Next level approach, yeah. This is a history class that is like, it reminds me of ancestry.com, but like through skating. And because mm -hmm. you know, they collect blades, which Dorothy has a blade collection. Did you know Dorothy collects like vintage blades? <laughs> which and again, out of context, sounds very scary. <laughs> But, you know, let me explain to you, because I, I went to the class last night, as one does, and they get, like, artifacts from the 1800s, and they could connect, Karen can connect the blade that you pass her that was, like, left in your attic. There was a blade that was left in some barn for years, and she's looking at it. Yes, and this is this kind of blade, and they were doing this in 1830. They were already doing black brackets and three turns and the flying three turn, because, you know, in 1880 is when Axel, Axel Paulson first did the flying axle, and, you know, it was named the axle because there was another Paulson that was his brother, so he named it after his first name, and that's why we see that in the special oh, that I didn't know. I mean, I knew it was named after him, but I didn't realize that's why they went with the first name. Oh, how funny. Lord and something, Lord and Lady Stanley of the Stanley Cup are like, and they're looking at this artifact from 1880. And you're like, yes, and this was happening here. And you know, Karen's husband is Patrick Kelly, the speed skater, who also works, he also played hockey at McGill. So Karen and her husband, they can skate and do all of this on uh, speed skates, hockey skates, and figure skates. And you know, they're, it's, it's just, it's a lot of information, okay? It's, yeah, like the, it's a lot of history there, yeah. Okay. I don't know if you know the Mills family, but I tried to interview them all in 2016 and I got five out of the six plus the mother. I mean, maybe my perfectionist self, I've like left it completed. So, you know, we're still searching for the sixth Mills okay. family. <laughs> Fascinating. The mother sent you all off into elite sports to be. Right. And I think Jessica Mills had more coaches than Courtney Hicks and Nicole Bobak. Like, you know, she learned figures from Barbara Rolls and then she went to Evie and she went here and, you know, three of the Mills family went to law school after this. And like Nathaniel was in three Olympics for speed skating. And yeah, so there's a lot happening. Okay. 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 With the Kellys. If you haven't seen, if you haven't watched Debbie's video, Skating to Diana Ross, amazing. It is the most emotional thing. She's in full, I kept telling her you're in full drag because Shepard, you know, he's a packaging agent, Jonathan. And he's very into world art. Mm. Shepard's like if Dick Button came from family money and can just go full into whatever he wanted. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I did the the Debbie Amazing Grace was was quite moving because you could tell she was having a moment. Yeah. Like, so it doesn't even matter what it is. Although the axle was lovely. But um, even just like her standing there and she let the music really play for a while before she began. And you can see she is breathing big. Like, I, I think she she had to have been feeling a lot in that moment. And that's, again, infectious to watch. It's better in practice the night that Karen is like filming it on a GoPro and everyone's like, who's that small lady running around? Like with everyone, because they filmed it. It was so incredible. Her back loops were the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen in my life. Jonathan, mm -hmm. we're gonna, I know I volunteered you for the competition next year. It's the 10th anniversary. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, 
believe that this is like connected to recording art and gems and this and that, and they want a live opera singer. I'm like, no one got it, got it. Hello. Got it. <laughs> Hello. So, and it's the 10th anniversary. And I think that we need to turn it into not only this festival, but kind of like, you know how there's Comic-Con and nineties con, I think we need skating con and we need to invite all the old Queens. Yes. Right? Linda in full glam, Jojo, Dorothy. Dorothy's on the board of the organization. They've had Janet Lynn here. We need them all descending in like, because they came to this event for the, for the on ice gala in like full glam, right? Mm -hmm. We need all of the stars of the ice capades. Like yes, there are Oscars. Yeah, you know, you know, like going back as former winners, if you will. Yeah, we've been overlooking a pairs queen from the eighties, and it wasn't intentional. We honestly didn't know that this person was a queen because she's West Coast and we're East Coast. Jill Watson. Oh, of course. She reminds me. Okay, have you ever seen the movie Three Identical Strangers? Did I make you watch that documentary? No, you told me about it though. These were the triplets that were then separated. Yeah. I believe that's the case with Christy Phillips and Jill Watson. I okay. believe that Christy Phillips is like the gymnastics Louisiana version. And Jill Watson is like the skating ice capades version. They are wasn't, the wasn't she a beige boot girl? I believe so, yes. I yes. fought in Calgary for that that bronze medals. I thought she was bronze, uh, beige boots. Now, I wanted to, so I was sitting in the hockey box with the judges during the figures competition. Paul Wiley is here, Jill Watson. He had me move in between them because Paul was judging and felt that the judges shouldn't sit next to each other so they couldn't speak. Oh, okay. I never judged before and took it very seriously, okay? okay? I'm here, Jill Watson's here. And she's like, oh, hi, I'm Jill Watson. And in my head, I'm like, uh, Karen Kwan just choreographed my program who's divorced from her old pair partner and that was like a known relationship yeah whoa okay yeah. you know what I didn't feel like this was the venue to even like have that discussion with her yeah. I yeah. better like, you know yeah. we're like I was like whoa whoa and whatever that weird camera incident was at the Olympics wasn't that like we need her on. We need her on. Yeah, she, she's got a lot to say, I have a feeling. Queen, she's glamorous, she's feisty, she's still in shape. Like, she took the judging very seriously, too, as did that Tommy Liss. Mm. I also needed to make that, like, so the fancy skating is supposed to be like the original free skating. So, there's supposed to be like none of those Benoit lines or anything. It's about pure skating, but it's also about all of the movements. So like Debbie likely had too many crossovers in her program for it to be mm. text what the rules want. And that woman Mary did it like to text. Did Debbie's have more speed and power? Yeah. So Paul, each judge like judged the overall, but they each had a focus on what they were looking. So I think Paul was edge control and speed or crossovers or something. They each have their sheet for the judging. Paul had a separate sheet just to make detailed notes and like some sort of shorthand. And then in the men's event, there's this boy Zane who trains with mm -hmm. Sylvia and John. His brother was also in the event and like Shepard skated, but Zane went first and his music went off mid-program. Now, Shepard is great, but like to get through the long program is more of like a, a uh, challenge for him. He's like a whiz with the figure. You've never seen someone on the ice like Shepard. But I watched his Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I thought it was quite moving. Of course it's quite moving. And it's Rufus singing Judy at that where yeah. he's in a concert and perfect song for him. But Paul felt I was trying to pick up what they were putting down because like the judges are sitting here and they're not talking, but the music went off during Zane's performance. Zane Benson is his name. And it's really unfortunate because this is all about art and everything. But when the music goes off, you lose the whole performance. Yeah, yeah. the momentum, the moment you were creating, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Zane and Shepard were like clearly at a different level from the other guys. And Paul goes, you know, I would like a reskate, 
because I don't think I can rank this appropriately without seeing the full thing. And you're like, this is Paul's like first time judging, but like, of course, of course he felt the need to judge this accurately and not just like, let this go. But then the guy has to like skate it all again. Oh, and this kid is so game. He's like, yes, I want to do it again. I get to skate. Okay. okay. He won because he did it again. He won the fancy uh, ahead of Shepard. Like it was. Ah. Okay. So yeah, so that's our little time in Lake Plus. And lots of other things happening. It, it sent me down a Sonia Henny rabbit hole. Yes. So anyway, lots happening here. But yes, watch Debbie, watch Marianne. Oh, there's this girl, Sarah Jo, who's like Liz Schmidt, but like she lives in, she told me she has like a sparkly shed where she lives in a cabin in Vermont and like makes an ice rink in her backyard. And it, I was intrigued. So in like some of the videos you were posting, because I, I always used to hear about the black ice that they would do figures on and stuff. This was also in person. It was a darker shade of ice. Black ice. And how do they do that? I believe they paint it black, like at the bottom, like they melt the ice. It's, it's the base level that is the color. And then it's the same ice that basically goes over it. Okay. It's figures. Like, yeah. And you're like, whoa. Well, and then even when they were doing like the arty figures, I'm not using the right terminology, and they were creating the different flowers and doing all these sort of unique things. Let me tell you, Paul will be like, well, they're not doing the figures like we competed them really. And it's like, yeah, but Karen's like, we're doing the original figures that people did on the ice before. Even more authentic, yeah. Because remember, she's like National Geographic about this. Right. <laughs> okay. Here I am, I'm starting to learn the figures because of course, Paul, who didn't compete in the figures competition and acts like, um, you know, there's debate about whether or not Paul liked the figures or not. If you ask Shepard Clark, he will tell you Paul didn't. Paul's like, no, I liked the figures, but okay. He teaches with the figures. He's like, well, the forward outside eight is gonna help your axle. So let's do this. And I posted the video last, and like, he's right. Mm. Well, I, I have heard that from several coaches where they're like, we will just say, do this going into the jump. And the generation now doesn't even know what that means. Yeah. So like after spending time up here, I really think that like basically figure skating is a dichotomy where they're judging these standards about p p things that people complain about. Lutz edges, flip edges. That's all from the figure. Right. Because they used to teach the Lutz off of the back outside. So basically, we're judging figure skaters on a standard that isn't actually accurate based on how anyone teaches anymore because the figures are gone. But right. I was reading the book and, you know, Slavka believes that figures balance the body more on left and right. And the reason that skaters have all these hip and back issues is because we're just jumping and moving on one side as opposed to the other. And figures used to train them for four hours a day to balance both sides of the body equally. Mm. That so makes like, sense. Yeah. You into like some real deep, like, yes, I believe that when they got rid of figures, it was probably the worst thing for the sport ever. Yes. Yeah. Especially if they could judge it with AI. Like, I believe, yeah, they should bring it back. Yeah. I'm like, I'm there. I'm I'm at that level of crazy where I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay. One. Yeah. And it had the posture and the glamour and all of that stuff. So, yeah, sorry if people aren't interested in the root of skating, but this is the skating lesson. And you know what? We need to talk about the important Consider yourselves taught. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, like I'm, yes, I had a lesson in the black ice with Karen and I skate like, yes. Also, I didn't post this yet, but you know, I'm a little bit, I believe anyone that's like super driven and super, you know, like when you're type A, that you can, all, the problem with that is that you can be resistant to change, right? Mm, yeah. Not, or you get set in your ways. But skating with Paul, I knew he was going to do this. And like, I waited because I knew he was going to do it. And I didn't know if I was mentally ready for this. I just had this gut feeling that Paul was going to change my axle entrance because I learned it on a circle from the Russians. And I knew he was going to do it. And I didn't know if I was mentally ready for this. Like, I really, like, I have to tell you, I really didn't know. Yesterday, he made me do the Lucy Rockover entrance into the axle, which is like the Dorothy entrance, where like you go like from the change of edge and mm -hmm. step row, which is completely different timing and completely different mentally because you have to be ready to go. Like, 
I'm not hyper focus. It's like a lot for my like ADHD mode. Like, oh my God, was I exhausted mentally, emotionally, physically after learning this? But it's also super fun. But I'm also like, maybe not ready to show everyone yet, but when it gets there, okay. like, <laughs> I know I'm going to go home to Russians who are going to be like, oh my, what are you, what are we doing? Mm. Like, different mm-hmm. schools yeah of course well you know i've never had an american coach because basically the russians just pushed all of the american coaches out of skating that's what's really going on like if you think about it across the board do you think in the big picture one will be easier for you um i, mean, I think probably because one's just going to be more familiar right now i think that the rock of War will make the other one better because it will force it to yeah okay so but it's like, it was kind of that next level of mental challenge that like my accent was feeling really good in the spring. We went to summer sessions where we were like, like pack rats. And it was like really not possible to work on it that much. It was not a good summer session at our rink. Um, so uh, for many reasons. And you know, <laughs> we're learning the rock over entrance, which is also Jonathan, a pattern that isn't going to be recognizable to any of the kids at the rink because nobody does it, right? Right. When you're on the rink watching other people, they have to like learn your patterns. So, and you know, I skate with ice dancers and, oh yeah, it's, you know, you know but we're doing it, Jonathan. Yeah, you know, it's happening, okay. folks. Okay. <laughs> Worthy, right? Which is always the goal, right? Are we, otherwise, what are we doing? You know, when you have a lesson with Paul, he starts telling you about his Oliver program or when he went to see the Martha Graham performance. Mm. And you know how to do this and this when they, and you're like, yeah, Paul. And then, <laughs> and, and then he'll start talking about like pistons and then like using all these smart terms. And then uh, like, it's like another level. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's always insight into what is happening inside someone's head. And you, I have even thought about that in music where I will hear someone and we're doing like the same thing. And then to hear them describe it, I'm like, oh my gosh, if that's how I thought about music, I would not be able to do it. I oh, have yeah. to like big picture, broad strokes. Like you have to realize, Paul's, I think what made his interview so interesting is you realized he learned from the best of everyone for everything. Yeah. And like, maybe it wasn't in the right order to make him like the quintessential, like Sonia Henny, but like, yeah, he has that technique. All the information is there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, uh, and he's not over the fact that he was fat when he was 10. And I yelled at him about it. <laughs> Paul, I, there's a video, I will post it. Paul always references, and he did it in the interview, I was 10 years old from Dallas, had a leg wrap on a double loop, chubby kid. And I was like, Paul, you're fine. You gotta let that go. <laughs> oh, like, we all are before those hormones like, you know, pop in and then you have that spurt. Yeah. He, not over it, Jonathan, not over it. Okay. <laughs> all the things we carry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He was chubby when he worked with John Curry, apparently. Is that the trauma? Is that the root of the trauma? Yeah, it's not that- Paul. Yeah. You All did right. okay. You did okay. The rest of the world, we really got in deep. But I, for people that enjoyed that conversation, I hope it was fascinating. So, yeah. This we'll is- look at more of the fancy clips. Yeah, that- we're putting up a lot of them. Jewelry and the jewels. So, you know, he gave me something that, like, I'm going to need to go to a casino or find more balls to go to because Shepard gave me this, John. Like- oh, how subtle. How subtle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, as one needs this from Shepard. Okay. Oh my God, how lovely, though. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, skating this weekend, what'd you like? T- talk to okay. Me. First, let's go to. Also, Jonathan, pause. Is Simone Biles the Sonia Henny of our time with her level of dominance? Oh my gosh. No. The real story about Simone. Yes. Did she win a world championships? Yes. Is she amazing? You bet. I love that she called out. Was it the Wall Street Journal? Journal. Who used a picture of someone else. Oh, there's a better story about that even too. It has layers. So like, your, like your bracelet. <laughs> So you know, so she, Simone, like she, they used a different photo 
of a different black girl. And you start to wonder if you work in, I even know like when we put out communications for the company I work for, the levels of review that something goes through before right. it gets published. Uh, you have to think about it. There was an art editor who made a graphic artist that made that image to like congratulate Simone for her wins. Now, did they have their own photographer? Did they go into Getty archives? Like how they, right? But someone picked the rock. Now, was it mislabeled in the Getty archives or did someone at Wall Street Journal mess up? Yeah. Here? But also it went through a million reviews and no one saw it. Okay. Simone did. And you know that people of color are always telling you that people just think we all look the same and they don't care enough mm. to find out. It was not a good look for that publication. Incredible that she called it out. Yeah. It got even better because Kathy Johnson Clark is like this well-meaning empath who is a bleeding heart, but she also, I think, wants everybody to get along and be happy. And, you know, she works in the media, so she likely takes that really, you know, and she wants to, she was like, and she posted something on Twitter that was like so well-meaning but you can tell like showed her own white privilege. And I believe was probably horrifying for Kathy who didn't mean anything bad by it. But she goes, well, I don't know if it was intentional because people, you know, they, they always confuse me with Julianne. And then you get people that are posting like, you're one ass. You know, like, you uh, can just imagine. listen, Kathy owned it and apologized in 30 minutes. She didn't like mean it like that. But it was like, when I, when I knew it was Kathy, of all people that just mm. you just have to know her to know like she authentically was like well people forgot with julianne like what the same way linda thought what's wrong with grooming right <laughs> right <laughs> which she thought when they were being you know warned about people that groom children she thought they meant doing their hair yes okay like kathy oh, and kathy that authentically she wasn't trying to put anyone down but like oh Mm, so uh, the context of this is not the same and you get into the comp yeah so listen she owned it she apologized and she didn't mean any but yes i don't think simone clapped back at her but yeah it was yeah she had said her piece with the publication with that post there's been a lot happening over the last then we have the war we have oksana on instagram we have like there's a lot happening so. There's a lot. There's a lot that's vibrating right now. I mean, I didn't even know that this Shanghai trophy was happening. I was in the middle of the week. Yeah, it was kind of random, but that stressed me out. I don't know. Did that stress you out? Well, sometimes if we do, especially when we film on Sundays, I prefer if it's in the middle of the week because otherwise it's such like a a fast turnaround to watch it all and then Just film it. another event on top of the other events. Yeah. There were so many going on, but the Shanghai lineup was randomly outstanding. Uh, and we saw Junwan Cha. Did you uh, say like two days before on a different continent? So I was- No, that's why I was like, what is happening? And some some good moments for him here, some less so. Um, the triple was- before, How much is going to improve in that amount of time when I he know. didn't- he was in shape for the axles, like in yeah. that program. Well, the, the axle in the short program worked for him. And then he did the triple axle, double axle, double axle in the free skate, which was lovely, and then popped the next one. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I don't know. Again, you're right. Like, how can you like go back and regroup and get something out of the next competition if you don't allot any time for it to, to simmer? But um, I remember. Lucy told Paul that he needed to stop waiting so long on his axle, and Junwa has the same problem times 10. Times 10. And it's interesting because obviously that he knows that, and yet something is still delaying him. Yes. Um, I can't quite figure it out. But, I, you know, even though they're like sort of unconventional, and I don't think the free skate music really ends big enough for my taste, I love both of these programs for him. I enjoy them immensely. I have to say, when I saw Shoma's exhibition number for the free, I thought, oh my God, how is anyone going to beat that? When we, it was like stunning. Yeah. So, I mean, there are a few male programs out there that, that I think are lining up to be really iconic moments towards the end of the season. 
Yeah. And listen, I'm okay with A-list skaters. Who At A-list, I mean like you're meddling at the world championships, you're in the final group, you're the creme de la creme and you do shows. I'm okay with them not doing these senior Bs and taking the time. Right. And the all to fight over who gets the best spot in the last group and all this. I want to see skaters at their best. I don't want to see them too early. Yeah. I'm okay with someone like Shoma taking that extra time to get ready. Yes. Yeah. Because when we watched Jason Brown to watch him do this new Tarzan program, he it's interesting. I think that Jason kind of needs the music to carry him and that this may not lend itself to Jason getting as many tens as he did like at U.S. Nationals. Now, it's intellectually more interesting of a program. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I was really in for it. But think about how much of judging is that extra intangible emotion. Because I, I feel also the intensity of that music, especially in person, could rev up a lot of energy. But is the music emotional enough <clears throat> that it will go 97510 the way Impossible Dream just slays you when Jason's skating to it? To me, it would more so. Right. Because I'm getting more of that like adrenaline and energy from Which I didn't as smart as you, Jonathan, or as um, educated in music as you, right? These are basic people. These are these are what white girls that you would call basic, right? Like the think about who's judging the event. So is that music easier for them to understand? Yeah, I guess I think there's just something so driving and and kind of like building in this momentum and sharper stuff. And the we got a lot of new moments, like his step sequence is so great. And what this lends itself to in this program, I think it's so weird. I mean, I understand the requirement that they need you to have levels in your step sequences, but that's when we so see so many people just crouch down for no reason and slow down. The way he utilized the levels in the step sequence was remarkable. And, and I think the music helps that. I don't know. I think it could get a crowd going in a more energetic way than something lilty and beautiful like Impossible Dream did. Um, so I would imagine the performance scores could go up. Well, I'm, you know, we're willing to go on this journey with him to see what happens, right? Yeah. yeah. I and no danger of winning the world championships or U.S. nationals. So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. Give us the show. Yeah. And Let I it. felt he did. Yeah. So, you know, Jonathan, I did get to have the debate with Paul Wiley about like Joshua Ferris versus Jason. Like we're, and, like I kind of preferred Joshua if I'm being honest, but I'm, I love Jason. I love Jason. Yes. But like, you know, there are few people that can really understand that conversation, you know? Can you imagine if you had that with like Megan Duhamel? She'd be like, neither one of them had quads. <laughs> she'd be like, well, Josh. <laughs> maybe, maybe that would be the response. <laughs> you know what I really love is like following the situation about like which Canadian pair team people are behind or which pair. Like are, if you're behind Deanna or you're behind this other team and it shows you the way everyone's brain works. Mm. Alexa's working with Deanna. KMT, other team. Tara Kane, I think other team. Megan, other team. Renee Roca, Deanna. And it just shows you everyone's view on skating. It's like, are you a Tara? Are you a Michelle? Are you right. a Tra or are you a Deanna? Right. Which one are you? Leave it in the comments below. We want to know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, we also saw more in Shanghai from Adam, uh, Xiao Him Fa. And yeah. again, I don't understand these programs and I one could wonder why he's competing so much, but I will tell you that quad Lutz is starting to really become a thing for him. He landed a huge one um, in the short program and a fabulous one in the free skate. So yeah. I was like, if, if he's using these sort of early smaller competitions to get that under his belt, then I think it will have served him well because it, it looks like it's, it's really cooking. Yeah, no, it, it's quite, it's incredible. Um, with the Benoit programs in general, Brady. Now there are some people Wait, that- just really quick before we leave it, because his is a Benoit program. For some reason, he threw a backflip into the free skate. Yeah. And I and got the two point deduction, which I guess is the IJS deduction for a backflip. And I just thought how unnecessary, I, I, I don't know if he ever explained what that was about. 
make him a bigger name and a bigger show skater and someone that's going to be invited to China or other countries to do shows. Like, I mean, China- the crowd went wild for it. It wasn't a great backflip, but it was in there. Yeah. But maybe have saved it for the exhibition. It just seemed a strange... Also, I Oksana was upset that Chen Lu is working with Russians, but her husband is Russian. So what do we expect, right? Yeah. And, she and Russia are political allies. Like, I can't solve the world right now, yeah. okay? This is... I, I read that that article of Chen Lu's, and I, I was like, okay, it's clear what's happening. Dr. Shevetsky also went to something they had with the xenon gas, with Veloshajar in China. Chen Lu was there. You, look, we're just, these are facts. We are just... Yeah. But, Love Chen Lu's skating. Couldn't do a back crossover for her life, but I loved her skating. Okay. And she even had her own camera pit incident, right? Was that um that little hammer in the short program when it's just like her hand <laughs> like up into the camera? Delicate, it just hit. Yeah. Um, all right. But, sorry, so you were gonna go into Brady, who won here. Brady, yes. And looked good for her. Some of yeah. the jumps still, I think with her low back inhibition from injuries, um, I think that, you know, Karen was talking all about how I had sprained ankles and of course it's going to go up through your SI joint and all of this stuff, the lines in the body, you know, Brady has had ankle issues and foot issues and then with her back. So, um, the one thing I noticed about Brady, just about the skating, cause I have this problem and Paul's talking a lot about it, but when I watched her, it's like, when I get nervous, I tend to want to go flat, meaning like I don't go into my edges and like ride them. So we're like really working on like ankle bend and getting into the edge. Brady always is kind of upright. Mm. Or between the edges, the edges aren't like deep in between. Few skaters are. Jason is on some deep edges on his transitions, right? I just noticed that she always looks very up and down to me. And maybe it's just my perception of her skating rather than what she's doing each moment. Well, she does seem posture oriented in this area. Yes. And so it seems to be the focus maybe more than like you've talked about like that ankle flexibility or, or ability of motion there. So I just notice it with her. And then you wonder like, would she get that extra little bit on the jump if they worked more? The other thing with the Benoit programs with Brady is I get that they're trying to give Brady style for someone that maybe is not the most artistic person. To me, it reads transparently put on and not from within. But I mean, it's, I, but is put on style better than no style? Yes. Well, that's the thing. If there are limitations with the person you're working with to be able to emote in a certain way, I guess instead of being the emotion, they have to show you that emotion in some way. Right, she's not, she's not gonna be, right? That's just like the, but I appreciate the improvement and the effort for style. Uh, I mean, I might make some changes to the Benoit packaging, but you know, that's- I just, I had a big problem with the Turin Dot program. And it started with a great deal of gravitas that again, she was, she was doing her job in, um, but of course, like negative a thousand points for that heinous um, female rendition of Nessum Dorma at the end. And the cuts start getting weird. And she was sort of running out of the steam and doing those like weird illusions where it looks like she's just tying her shoe or something. Um, <clears throat> it's the beginning worked for me, but the second half of the program just really didn't Don't do it. That music calls for like a power and a bomba almost like a bombastic emotion or a full emotion. like. Something more than like is, be I know that Jenny and Todd weren't like bombastic, but like, if you think about it, they had this like fullness to their emotion and that program and the intent, the effort that was being putting in that very John Nick's way, right? I don't get that from Brady. Well, it's almost about being generous and, and she is always a little held. She's always a little guarded. There's always just the slightest bit of a wall. I don't know how she's the gift giving, but you mean generous in terms of- yes, yeah, a generous performer, a generous of heart while she's skating, you know, this like open, vulnerable, raw, passionate sort of idea. She is more about correctness and like her lovely leg positions and camel spit. Like she's about- oh, the Nessun Dorma type. Shoma's a Nessun Dorma type. I believe he yeah. did it. You know who I think would be much better if, if we could just- they could trade programs this year because we weren't going to like the feeling good anyway. So Brady can take it, right? I mean, what if Cowrie did Nessun Dorma? Oh. 
I'd have to see it. I can't quite picture it. I can, with her jumps in the second half, I can like feel yeah. it. Yeah. Because I, it's also knowing that Kauri's greatest strength is waist down in her skating ability. I view Ness and Dorma as such like an open, broad sort of arm. Made her, and her legs and her power. You mm. know, that's what the program became about. Yeah. Hiding some edges, that double axle. I don't know. I think it's a thought. Yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to see it. What'd you think of her? This She was great in Japan Open. I don't love the program, but she was great. It was just... Yeah, I mean, to me, the star of the Japan Open was Satoko. Yes. Just one of the most gorgeous programs to Romeo and Juliet I have ever seen. And her final steps, like, took you on an emotional journey that, like, was so theatrically impressive and honest and heartfelt and gorgeous and emo like it gave me everything I've ever wanted and in what we're saying that other people don't know how to do if if you're wondering like well what do you mean just go watch it the way she starts is this beautiful innocent girl and ends with these like reaching pleas as she's dying like it was the ultimate in what I think skating should be. I mean, she pulled out her her Lutzes or whatever, you know, but again, that's, I'm not, I'm, I don't care because what she does transcends any sort of jumping. I think she has so much integrity. Yeah. And, and I think you can really tell by when someone's a professional skater and how, how much effort they put into at the Japan Open. I would really, str I really struggle when we see professional skaters Phone trained. Now it's also way harder to be out of competition and train that intensity. It's just so hard, especially if there's no motivation for competitions. You don't have and the same. Don't do it. I I with you. Yeah. Yeah, that it's a great paycheck, but I don't think it is some. I don't think it's a memory that you want to look back on, right? Like I don't think Mariah Bell is going to ever YouTube her performance from here. She probably wishes that it take the check. Just feel like it didn't happen. Okay. But if it is a good check, I mean, to me, that's incentive enough. I mean, it, it sort of had a feeling of those professional competitions where Nancy, was, you could tell she was almost being forced to do them and did not want to. Yeah. But here it's like, no one's forcing you to do this. But I think that this event starts out as a fabulous idea. You get to go to Japan. It's a great crowd. It's, you get to do a program again. But I think that the realities of training it when you're in professional mode and teaching and life gets in the way is what it kind of looks like. For... Yeah. And it's just hard because I don't think that Mariah was naturally the most competitive of the skaters, right? In terms of like believing in her technique and throwing it out there and yeah. I agree. But... And again, it was like Satoko did like a double sow, double toe or something at some point, but the performance was so committed that to me, it was still the highlight of the ladies' or women's event. Um, so it's not like, oh, you just have to be at your technical maximum. One year, Jeff Buttle won it when he was retired. Yeah. Um, but I think it's very hard to do and a very difficult competition, especially yeah. flying over from the US to get there. It's already a time change. And somehow it always seems like the Japanese team is primed to win. Like they just are, yeah. are now. Mariah didn't have her greatest performance. Morris, far worse. So yeah. I, nothing to say there. Oh, well, yeah. You know I mean, what the other Don't you realize how, like, does a Terry not want to be in Russia at all? Like, she went to Japan. Like, she wanted to get out of there, right? Like, she wants to be seen, darling. She would let herself be seen by that performance, which she knew, because yeah. she wanted to help it herself. So. Yeah. I mean, Lena was a bit of a disappointment here. Okay. I had fears about these programs for her, her packaging in general. My personal opinion is that it's a miss and it's, I think they're trying to turn her into Ashley Wagner, but in this Belgian way, I don't it know that she's authentic to Luna. It seems like th this is more her team's packaging than hers. And I think she probably likes this music, but you're also trying to be strategic in a figure skating competition, right? So I think we get into a situation where they almost are making her like the modern day Ashley Wagner, except Ashley had more traditional music that she made fun. Right. Luna starting with music that you 
now would consider for an exhibition, but she's using it for a free skate. And that's kind of worked for her in the past. Yeah. It works in Ice Dance to an extent with like Fear and Gibson, although you know people have issues with the Rocky program. I think with Luna, you get into a situation where if you're going to do Madonna, we expect you to have a full level of performance intensity the entire time. But when you're focused on jumps, it's not there. Now, I believe Luna had, you know, there's post-Olympic burnout is what happens with a lot of skaters, physically, mentally, emotionally. And I've heard a lot that it takes like two years. And I remember Michelle, the two years after Nagano was like doing a lot of pro-ams. And remember that season with the red violin? She just had a really tough right. time flowing. And I think we're starting to see that with like Calvary. Jason, Luna, because so many of them are flying back and forth to Japan all the time. That's exhausting. Yes, they get to do shows, which is amazing. And you want that. It's also really hard while you're training, while you're trying to do this. And over the summer, Luna was doing like a lot of sows in shows and that was it. And they weren't like always great sows. Mm. So now she's putting the jumps back in, but it just doesn't look like she's in gear, which is fine if she has to peak at Worlds but you just have to let the process happen and not expect her to win medals during the fall. But I think she needs to add a lot to that music if she's going to do it. Cause in some ways it's harder. If we, if you're going to do Madonna, we expect full level of fun. And if we're listening to fun music and you're not giving us anything, what are we it's doing? Weird. And that's the difference. And you say like, Oh, are they modeling after Ashley Wagner? But Ashley Wagner did know how to work a crowd. The whole program whatever you will about like the technique or the training or whatever it was but she knew how to like perform and get get people riled up and this that's why this seemed like such not a fit because she was almost fighting the vibe of the music instead of letting it lift her up yeah because i think she was focused on the jumps i think that the jumps were new for her getting them back right like i think that she's not there in the performance oh. so yeah. I think it's going to take a lot of training because it. I imagine she's had a slower start to the season just based on how she looked in the shows over the summer. It right. just that she needed a rest, which is human. She's been going wow. all along. She was right. competing against Sherbakova, Trusova, and Valieva, who are like, where are they now? Right. right in the throes of that. And it really hasn't had a big break since. So because last year was everybody's opportunity to win without Russia, right? But now it's like, oh, they're still not back. And right. Still, oh, we gotta do it again, yeah. yeah. Which is very different probably than how she viewed herself two years ago, right? Right, right. And I think it's probably exhausting for many of them. Like Wakaba didn't compete last year, so she's just trying to get back, right? But it's, it's interesting what's happening. But I, you could see the fatigue in Jason. You could see it. In, these are slower starts to the season than they had last year. So, yeah. Um, you just hope everyone stays healthy and the whole deal. Um, but yeah, I thought, Isabeau, I thought we saw some grit from her coming out and getting it done. I still think that the dress doesn't highlight her skating. It sort of swallows her in a way. Yeah. I think that, I think a better package could just make her skating and, and the positions, make it them easier to appreciate. And you're like, well, I already appreciate her positions. It will enhance them even more. It will make her more iconic. It will make her what she does. I think the dress is confusing it. I watched the program and I'm confused by this dress. Yeah. Which I believe she designed herself. I believe it was given to her, but I just, I don't think her team is bringing out her best qualities so yeah. um but again for me that whole freaking event just about satoko yeah uh, just stunning the packaging the combination of musical selections oh, i wanted to give props to kazuki i think he's really developing he still has more to do with extension and i don't think that this music is him but i think he's going to come back to a balance you know i think that the la la land had a nice balance of like fun kazuki at the end with more emotional and then i think last year's program was like too much candy the whole program he was way too amped up i thought it was way like you know when you eat something it becomes too sweet midway right. through that's what that program felt like so now he's gone in the other direction right now it needs a little spice <laughs> yeah. sweet spot and he'll have developed as a performer 
But I have to say, I was nervous about him in Japan with all these other stars coming back, but he looks like he's- He held his own. From having all of these opportunities and how he views. Yeah. So I'm delighted to see it, you know, because then if he could be the third guy in Japan, hey, right, that would be fantastic. Because we, we saw, I mean, I think now I'm even forgetting who I saw where. We saw Shun Sato and Kaomura yeah. also do some pretty solid, solid skating they're still in it as well but to me they don't have the full package i agree right? i much prefer a kazuki just sort of from a performance standpoint al has incredible jumps yeah but not the full package of what we want to see in skating right he's missing half of the sport you know like i right uh, yeah so um yeah i wrote i wrote for for Cal, I was like, he needs acting coaches. Because again, you can tell a choreographer told him to do something, but if it's blank in the face, it's not, it's not really inviting us in, in, in the same way. Um, Doesn't come from within. Yeah. And then the Shun Sato thing from a, like a, a performance standpoint, especially in the short program, there's this like huge musical moments that just go by and he's just like skating deadpan a couple of crossovers and it, it, those skates where i'm like mark, but kazuki does kazuki hears the music in a different way that's yeah. clear i noticed this at japanese nationals last year it was like shoma kazuki and everyone else because mm. yuma was injured right it wasn't at his full performance so yeah i don't know i think it's gonna be interesting and they have such a history of such Beautifully artistic male skaters. Uh, Yuzu, Daisuke, come on. Yeah, Machida and like uh, all, all of this sort of stuff. But um, yeah, now it seems very jump driven at the moment. Yeah, which yeah. is the way the it seems, yes. Well, hence, you know, Ilya cleaning up here and yeah. it's just more of the same from him. Um, but even the PCS, like he was solidly the winner of the PCS. Well, so, she showed up not rotating triple axles. So I don't know how you can get, you can't like give someone components when they don't have base level of jumps. Yeah. So, yeah. It was but, interesting because then also, as you were talking about Atiri going to Japan, I was impressed. Brian went to Shanghai with Boyan Jin. Um, well, Who do they have at the cricket club right now? Yeah. And, and Jun Wan, they were listing his coach as Brian, but Brian being there was still not sitting with him. He was only sitting with Boyan. And they, you know, that's an outdated thing. Remember he- they right? said, That's what I thought when I saw it, because we knew they weren't really working together anymore, but they were still listing it. Now on the Junior Grand Prix, the US did have two medals in the women's event. Um, I will say, I thought uh, that, I mean, Mao Shimada skating is so lovely. I don't think that she should be doing the quad this season. I think maybe take it out and train it. It looks like they're having some trouble with the Lutz as well, which Morin Honda also struggled with under that coach. And Satoko always had anxious Lutzes with that coach. So I don't know if Flip and But Rika took the Lutz out for a long time. Yeah, maybe that's like a... Is that a thing with that Hamada? Like, is that a coaching thing with that camp, if you think about it? Yeah. Maybe with, yeah. Um, also, Danny won his competition. I was. I did, I did find the videos of that. And when I saw the results only, I thought, oh. And then I saw it and I went, oh, okay. Um, it, it was still, I think, far from a memorable performance. I think it's going to take a long time. And I just think with the eight. In China, we used to call it the father and daughter. I mean, their ages are so different. Yeah. That how are they going to meld this into a pair? 18 and 32 or something like that. I mean, that's on a coaching staff and a choreographer to meld that together. That's challenging. Yeah. That's is what it is. I mean, that's Shelby Lyons and Brian Wells, where you're like, <laughs> I think it's like uncomfortable for the yeah. audience. But speaking of pairs, I was there. We, I saw in the results from Shanghai that there were a great deal of Chinese pairs competing, but could not find video of any of them for some reason. 
Um, even there were a couple of like full event videos, but none from pairs. So like Peng and Wang, Peng and Wang uh, were were skating, but no footage was found. On the Grand Prix. Okay, so that's yeah. Uh, I think in the U.S., Misha skated. They showed some promise at Boston Open with his new partner. So we'll have to wait. I think U.S. pairs is in a flux right now, especially because. Spencer had shoulder surgery and it's taking them longer to get back. So I think we're in flux. We're in for a wild ride. Now, wait, did you watch my girl yell him? Yeah, I did. In what I wrote down is she is wearing Dave Lee's red. Yes. Uh, free state. I was like, oh. I, yeah. That, and I want to costume that color with black this year. Yeah. There was something, Is do we know, which program did Sandra help her with? The short? My how did you know? How did I know what? That was my shade of red. That's like. Well, but you used to wear red on the show like all the time. I was like maroon, but not that. That's like my real color of red. Oh, I, so I guess somehow I just instinctively knew that. I was like, this is Dave Lee's red. Yes. 100%. 100%. And Sandra program. So Sandra did the free? With David. With yeah. David, yeah. It was effervescent. It was lovely. It was like light skating. It was the opening is broad, but it's like simple and gorgeous at the same time. Like I was all about it. And oh, wait, the, my favorite moment is she does these like cool sliding turns, like uh, somewhere around the Ina Bauer, and she has the hand down. And I was like, I am here for this kind of creativity. I think we need to send her back to Canada to work with David and Sandra for a hot minute to like really get the yeah. down right to really like lock it in this was a great first pancake you yes. see all of the potential that's there and she's not peaked too early this year right, right? yeah Definitely. Some, of, some of the jumps were a little like clumsy and she was cautious at certain times and to me that was just sort of beginning of the season stuff yeah but i'm i'm here for it yeah I'm I, I don't know Doing a little bit that thing that junwan cha delay before the axel each and each time you could tell she like paused or hesitated, it, it always threw off her timing, but the program still was singing to me. I'm not sure if the Je suis malade version is the one that I really love. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I think it works for her because some of the more guttural earthy interpretations <laughs> I think are too heavy or grimy for her. We need her to amp up her performance though. She needs to amp well, and Jusui Malat is dark. Yes. Yeah. That is like some real gritty text and connotation going on there. Um, but I just, I think all of the ingredients are right there. I tell you, the first year that we ever heard Jusui Malad, I was obsessed and used to play it in the rink all the time. Okay. Yeah. So I used to skate by myself every day and I would just blare, being like working on like pre bronze and bronze moves playing this music. <laughs> But yeah. like that yeah, full-throated raw emotion in the sound. My dad. My dad. <laughs> yes. Um, da -da 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 -da. Yes. <laughs> okay. But going back to Yellum, like who are you seeing right now as sort of the three leading ladies in Korea? He's, I th no, the three leading ladies in the world, Ms. Gauri Sakamoto, Ms. Yellum Kim, Ian Lee slash Isabel. Yeah, high end or high end, uh, it wasn't working for me this weekend. And there aren't a why. She had cool movements, but she was sort of rushing them in the short program. And the the free skate was just seeming a little heavy and slow to me. I don't know if it's just early, um, as obviously she was a bit of a late bloomer last season. So maybe that's that's what we'll see again. I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't quite clicking for me yet. I respect that Mia Hamada is trying to turn Mao Shimada into a versatile skater, but her short programs are always kind of a miss to me because you can tell she's so comfortable being lyrical, right? Yes. It's but she's trying to force her out of the box in the short program with like the Lion King and stuff. But to me, it's always like not purely. Well, and are there not other ways to stretch, but not in a total cinematic way that way? I don't know. Maybe there's a step in between. Yeah. 
it's interesting but i think it'll make her a better skater in the long run but she has to get those jumps yeah so the canadines canadines which we're referring to which by the way i love the idea for this rhythm dance the top gun yes for yeah. that yeah love okay and nikolai Sorensen looks good in that yeah she looks good and she always looks amazing yeah the proportion of the song is not satisfying to me. Yeah. It's almost a little too cut and pasty. Marie Frotz, I love you. I'm glad you went back to the dark hair. I confirmed with her she needs to go back to the dark hair to reclaim her place at the top of Ice Dance. She's going to a darker shit. She sent me a photo. Okay. okay. <laughs> we need to re-edit the top gun. Because the song that we all fall in love with takes too long to come in. Yeah. And then it's gone because we have to get into the samba, right? And it's like, no, this is what we want to see them skating to. It's the proportion that's wrong. It's Do not- we danger zone? How dare you? How dare you? Again, I watched that animated series, Archer. So they, there's like a nonstop joke about danger zone in that. So that's what I, I always look forward to that moment. But that, excuse me, the cuts were the least of their worries here because they ran into each other and she went down on the twizzles. And I mean, that really tanked them more than I realized it, it, it would have. I mean, I, don't, I can't remember off the top of my head, they were like sixth or seventh or something crazy um, after the rhythm dance. And then of course won the free dance, but the damage was done and the best they could walk away with was bronze. And then like even the browns, I think they finished two spots lower combined than they did in either segment. Like they somehow the way the ordinals, like the placements, it was crazy, right? Yeah. Very close competition with everyone near the same level, ultimately is what that means. Um, did you like their free dance? I'm sorry? Did you like their free dance? Brown or the Cana Danes? Cana Danes. I prefer the Top Gun for them. I don't, I mean, the, the long is nice. Yeah. But he, they do the bookend things. I I don't know. And like when don't the bell was realize ringing. someone has a weakness and then you can't unsee it. So he's had those injuries with his knee and doesn't really bend and is like just not at her level. I can't unsee it. But this happens in other things. For years, Shed and Zhao to watch 2003 Turn Dot, right? I think of her throws. Right. Rewatch it and watch him throwing her. Someone on TSL Live focused on his position in the throws. Fantastic. It will ruin it for you. It's like I when <laughs> it's lotless that Hanyu was always looking down and that is all you can see after you see that. It's like Shiley's Jones when you notice her wrist and then it's all you can see when she does gymnastics. It's, it's one okay. of those. Yeah. I mean, they did a good job of making it both modern and classical, making it both strong and soft. And the rotational lift, which is like, it turns out it's like kind of always my favorite element in a free dance. Uh, theirs is so theatrical. Like they are really bringing up, maybe also to compensate, it, it is a very performative kind of acting energy they're bringing to it. Um, and I liked it. I, liked I thought it. Herrera was skating for her life in that free. I saw so much improvement from her. Yeah. Um, I have to, I, I, and Anthony, uh, I, um, I mean, listen, the Finnish team is so lovely and they got a big win here at home and it's, it's happening for this team. They Again, are speaking about my favorite element, that rotational lift. Theirs is so flipping fast. And like the conditions are so good. I'm just all about it. And they have a competition in Finland. They skate well. The results seem to be working in their favor. They're like the little engine that good for me. I just, I, I love Julia Turgila. I love, oh my God. And the I, time goes so fast. Yes. Several times during ice dance programs, I'm sort of checking how much, how, how far in are we? Um, but this one just flies by like nothing. It's great. Yeah, so. The straight line lift. Mm. Yeah. Oh, this is the, the the other thing. In some of the straight line lifts and dance, keep seeing like the guy lift his foot to show the balance. It is so, I know they're doing it for the points I to, or, or whatever it is they're doing it for. When you see the guy's foot wiggle, it kills- I know. 
<laughs> you see them like balance checking the whole time. And it's like a look what I can do kind of like kid move. I don't hey, know. Check. I can't give them the higher GOE. Yeah. You want to. Yeah. But I'd rather they don't have to do that. Let let me just focus on her beautiful position. I, I don't need to now look at you doing a fake shoot the duck. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. I think who else there was this weekend? I felt like there were so many. Boyan Jin, not bad. He did a quad lutz. I mean, you know, he's working on some limited material right now. Um, the Italians safely winning in Shanghai. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, the free dance, I don't mind it. I'm kind of a fan of the free dance. I miss the the snow being in her hair at the end of last year's program. I just miss it so much. Although they give you a fascinating final spin position to end this one. But I loved it so much last year that I'm, my resistance to change has me in last year with this team. <laughs> and you know, in this year, you know. It was also this like random competition happening in Russia. And I watched, like Aliyev and some of my like normal ones I'm always checking in on. And you know who we saw was um, Artur Danielian. Yeah. And I was sort of curious because it had been a second that was sort of a question mark for me, what was gonna happen in the future there. Landed a killer quad Lutz. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh. And looked so much older, like clearly has gone through a growth spurt in sorts. He but... loved growing up. Yeah. Yeah, he was like a real performer and you know, he was still performing a bit, but a little less because now he's focusing on quad lutzes, I guess. So it's just been there was so much skating this weekend. And I know, and like all over in such different ways because they also had these smaller American competitions, and I was just like, she oh, fell. And she was oh my god, people's emotions about everything. It's been like, oh yeah, oh it's been a lot. It's been yeah. overload, overload. can't even bring like I I feel like we probably left out someone discussing someone that people but let's go back to Satiko's Romeo and Juliet was just so satisfying let's always go back to it I just rewatched it again last night because I was like were you just like in a mood when you watched it but especially after seeing all of this skating to then go watch that it was like a palate cleanser it was oh. just everything I, and didn't Sandra help her with that uh, no. She's doing Sandra something with Satoko. Oh, Sandra gave her this program. So funny. I was debating Sandra about her own music choice. They had given Satoko a Prince program to It's About the Walk. And I've only ever heard that song once before in my life. Like I never hear it on the radio. Remember, I've listened to all those 80s countdowns. But it, I heard it and I said, where do I know that song from? And you ever notice when like, you just know you know a song from skating, but you can't place why? Yes, or who or when or, but you know you know it on the ice, yeah. And I was like, I know it. And I was like, Sandra, I think it's from you. And she's like, no. I said, yes. It was Stephen Cousins beginning of act two, Stars on Ice 2000. I went on the Stars on Ice like archive and I don't think she actually choreographed that number, but I was like, that was, you, but of course, Sassatico, it was like a different side to her because, you know, we all want to see Romeo and Juliet Satico. Yeah, we do, it. yeah. And I'm sure it was like a cutesy number that'll take her some time and she's supposed to perform it later. But then the rhythm dance became all Prince all the time this year. So it was... Less, Brooke, less novel. Yeah. Less isn't telling us what her free dance is, but her rhythm dance is the cold-hearted snake and she... Which, you know, I, fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Fine. Um, that was what I was going to say about Luna's, like, Fine, Jonathan, picking fine music, basic, fine, okay? No, I don't know. I could see how that would work. I would see again, though. You are seeing me this weekend? Yes, I did. I was like not sure if I was going to go because it feels like a long trip. I feel like I've been gone for so long. Not that I have any reason to, like, be home other than like going to my own Pilates studio and stuff like that. Like, why do I want to be home? Like, I don't know. I sort of yeah, like- Kind of enjoying the change of pace, change of scenery. Yeah, but you ever like gone for a long time and you're like, wow, I've been gone for a long time. And then you're like, whoa, 
Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Really? But I'm like, yeah, but I've been gone for like a long time. Like when I was like off on like operatic gigs, like sometimes I just could not wait to get home. And sometimes I was like, yeah, I'm okay if I stay here. It's At so home, much- I'd be like, why did I want to be home? Like, yeah, you know, rush back for what? Yeah. What? But I'm like telling myself, like, you can watch Netflix here if you really want to do that. You don't even have time to do that here. You'll do that. You'll watch David Beckham on Netflix when you're home. You can go to the sock class with Karen Cortland and then do the most amazing Pilates of your life with her. So yes, okay, we're doing that. So I'm going to go see Alyssa Sisney. You know, I dance her now over the Dick Button Festival in Boston. And because there are all of these classes and I was like thinking of not going. And then Paul's like, oh, I really hope you're going. You know, we'll take that Nathan Birch class of skating. And then the Doug Webster. And I'm like, yes, I want to take a Nathan Birch edge class. We're yes, doing. I want to take edge yeah. class. So I know that I'll kick myself if I don't go. So yeah, I'm going to go. But it's like, okay, this is a long, this is a long trip. This is all right. But, you know, it's like Crack skating. On. Yeah. You're in it to win it, Dave. Right. You really are, but like, I feel like so different with my skating, the way I'm trying to put it together, but I'm also trying to learn like about real yeah. skating. So it's- and again, I would think a nice thing to be hearing from all these different schools of thought yes. um, and approaches, it's to me, it's whatever unlocks something and it might be from this person or it might be one thing from that person. It's, it's like you're curating a technique. I kind of like that. You like right at the end of, right by Labor Day. So I had to take some time off and I had worked on my posture incredibly over the summer. And I got rid of like my pain that I have in my low back arch. But because of the time off and then I got my program from Karen, it completely threw my pelvis out of whack. So I've Mm -hmm. been like gradually getting back in shape and getting my Pilates muscles back going. So that's been a journey too because my SI joint has been locking up. So we've been in a real journey the last months. This is... uh, and in the process, like my sit spin wasn't as perfect and someone did comment on my Facebook about it. And I was like, that hurts because I know it's true. And yeah. then so, back, <laughs> so that feels good. And then like, I did the best one of my life. And then Mary Scott Bolt's like, I want the leg lower. So, and I, so, I showed Paul- kind of spot on actually, yeah. Paul's like, Mary wants the leg lower. So we're, we're we worked on that. Lowering the leg, yeah. She has spoken. <laughs> Listen, I want to live in a world where we're doing fancy skating and watching Debbie Thomas skate to Diana Ross' Amazing Race. Like, that's where I'm at this year. Yeah. More intrigued by the ending of that competition with all of these great artists doing different things. And the like, creativity. That's what, I mean. And this is the greatest skating event of all time. Okay, we need types are drawn to skating, and this is exactly a celebration of that creativity, in my opinion. You can also practice in the black ice while you're here. You're like allowed. Incredible. Oh my god, you don't even know. Okay, this this like is like a fever dream being here for this. Incredible, Debbie. Like, and then they, you know that one of the competitions is they have to invent their own figure, which is art. That's incredible to me. And then there are all these art people here and they have an exhibition called Art of the Olympians. And this woman, Kathy Order, who is the late wife, uh, uh, the wife of the late uh, Al Order, who was an Olympic legend and also an artist. So they have all of the the art on display. One of them is Peggy Fleming. Isn't she painted it? He paints. Peggy paints. Do like you know a sip and paint? Well, funny you say about sipping because her thing was of a wine bottle. But oh. you know, she has the orchard. But remember we saw her drunk on Kathy Griffin? Yeah, so like, she did. Oh, and Kathy, Kathy, like, just that became like the through line of the entire episode. Yeah, oh. that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> they were like like a, a the fur ball or something like that. It was like a gala to raise money for... For animals, yeah, that was- We haven't lived until you've talked to Shepard Clark about Sonia Henny. Mm. You know, he believes that she was the world's first superstar. Uh, other people will debate that, you know, maybe Jesus yes. was first, but you know, um, there, there was- Four movies though, yeah. Um, but he will, he will give you, he will explain why, but then I watched, so then like I've been going down a Sonia Henny rabbit hole 
I watched that documentary about her life on uh, like vintage ice skating. The YouTube channel has it up. It's like Sonia Henny. Just Google it. It's, it's the documentary. People are going to ask me for the link in the YouTube. I know that they're going to be too lazy to type in Sonia Henny into the search bar. So they will just type and ask me to get it. This is what happens every week. Okay. And yes. But to um, reiterate, the channel is called Vintage Ice Skating. Okay. And your search term was Sonia Henny. Okay. Got it. <laughs> down when you search and people are going to ask do you know how many times people ask for the link to reflections on ice i'm like i gave the link last week I gave the link. <laughs> i'll come on the <laughs> yeah i understand i understand not the person crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so when you watch sonia she went after that fair and cold now like she went after it. she was not intimate okay then when you watch her homecoming to Norway, when people are like chasing her on boats to be seen, you've never seen anything like it in your life, okay? It's like, she was a star, okay? And you know what, justice for Belita, who I think was the most amazing of all time. And I would have loved to have seen Belita in more, but I think- No, why like, Sonia was crazy in Norway because Sonia was considering herself an American icon at this point. Right. When Norway asked her to help in the war against Germany, she didn't. Right. Then when after Pearl Harbor, she went like overkill for the US and doing things with troops and stuff with the American troops, but not the Norwegian troops. And then that mm -hmm. was a little problematic at the time, I would imagine. But you know what? Every star has a great scandal, right? It wouldn't be perfect, right? If it was too perfect, it would be fascinating, right? Yeah. That's... Listen. Because, oh, get this, Karen Cortland is married into the Kelly family, right? And like one of the ancestors along the lines, understudy for Sonia Henny. Get out of here, how funny is that? Okay. There's some book about her relative and it talks about why they decided to paint the ice rinks white. I'm like, oh, okay, let's let's read this book. Alpine Snow View, yeah. Oh, I bought a book, I didn't realize that Dorothy had like a memoir from the 80s i only knew her memoir from like the 2000s right and i was like well i, I have to buy it that's yeah. that's queen that's queen dorothy it's like, sign it. yeah oh my god yeah yes okay i hope she her daughter's getting married you know she was on an african safari for like three weeks she was supposed to be here but i think you know came back and then you know so you this is move. yeah but we you know we missed dorothy here of course yes this is as one, as one does, you know, as, as one does, <laughs> you know, this is, I mean, she's really like Glinda the Good Witch, right? Like, she's just like wonderful and just, don't you want your sits been like Dorothy's? That's, that was, I you just, know that's my goal, right? Did I tell you that? Like, I started studying the Lucy videos last year and like, I came in and I like showed Alexei, I was like, I want to learn this. I want to do the sits been like that. And, you know, they're like all like Russian and Ukrainian, they're like, okay okay yes all right and then that's like people started to see it and then mary saw it and gave tips and dorothy was giving tips and then i worked on with paul because he was in those lucy videos so yeah now we have like i wanted the dorothy sit and i wanted the dorothy scratch but now we're doing the rock over entrance into the axle which it's is so funny because everybody talks about that damn camel thing with her but actually it was the sit and the scratch that to me were the most impressive yeah Dick Buttons, Dick Buttons, uh, push Dick's button. He talks about that Dorothy Hamill yeah, we'll sit a million times. Yeah. Yes, I've been working on the camel here. It's had its moment here. Then there was the time, but I'm a weird one. Like I can't do too many reps of the camel. Then I get tired and it starts going. So the camel is always a nightmare. So okay. Okay. It's been going. It's having its moment. And um, yeah, we'll see. Living that like massive dream. I can, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So yeah, it's a lot of skating. Watch Shoma Uno this weekend. It will make your skating dreams come alive. I think he's going to give us at least one more great season. And this is... And then complemented with also watching Satoko. Watch Satoko. Juliet. It'll make your, your heart sing. Hold yeah. it edge. Thanks, everyone. Bye.